All right, so um, hello everyone. Um, as Andrew has mentioned, my name is Yasmin, and today I will be talking about uh, the topic of perception in Gorwa. And um, I just want to give a just a general overview of what perception is, and it is um, really just about sensory feelings. So, like, it has to do with the five senses: touch, smell, sight, um, taste, and hearing. And this is expressed in multiple in a like multitude of ways all throughout all languages, and so today my focus will be on Gorwa. But let's begin with the table of contents. I will be talking about how perception is actually expressed in English first, um, because it was the contact language in which I conducted the research in. So it'll be a good uh, baseline to have in order to compare and contrast. Um, then I will also, of course give examples of how perception is expressed in English. Uh, then I will move on to uh, how perception is expressed in Gorwa. I will talk about my methodology and the way I collected my data. I will give examples um, in and detailed explanations of how perception is expressed in Gorwa. And at the end, I will show a table of words that I have found that have like, that turned out to be new during the research. And then just a few final thoughts at the end. So, first of all, we have how perception is expressed in English. Um, we have like sentences that will be with verbs, with adjectives, or with adverbs. Um, so, the first example I will give will be with verbs. So, we have for sight, the boy sees the girl. So, this is expressed through the literal verb to see. Smell is also expressed through the verb to smell. So, the girl smells the flower. Touch is the same. The woman touches the cat. Hearing, the boy hears a song. And taste, the man tastes the soup. Um, as for uh, with adjectives, we have for sight, the girl looks beautiful. In this case, it's really not about her seeing, but it's more about the state of her existence and the manner in which she exists. So she looks beautiful. Um, for smell, the, the flower smells beautiful, so it's also about the quality of the smell or the scent. Um, the cat is soft for touch, so once again, it's more about quality. Um, hearing the song is loud and for taste, the soup is delicious. As for with adverbs, we have for sight, the girl is clearly visible. In this case, it really adds more nuance to the quality of the state that the person is in or whatever you're describing is. Same thing with the smell for the scent of a flower is pleasantly relaxing. Touch, the woman gently touches the cat, so really more so about the manner in which the touch occurs or the action occurs. Hearing, the boy listens intently, so similar to gently touching. Um, taste, and then it's the same thing, the man quickly tastes the soup, so yeah. Meanwhile, we have how perception is expressed in Gorwa. Throughout my research, I have found that there are four ways of expressing perception in Gorwa. Um, so the first way is through adjectival constructions. The second is verbal constructions. The third is copular constructions. And the fourth is this os construction that I am not 100% too sure about. However, it is very interesting, which is why I will talk about it later a bit more. Um, so for methodology and data collection, I collected my data through elicitation with a native speaker of Goro, which is, you know, the lovely Hezekiah Cody. Um, so during the elicitation sessions, the data was collected through translation and back translation. Um, so an example of this was when I was doing my elicitation, one of the very first things I had asked was, the girl is hard to see. But I had gotten the girl is not easy to see, which is dasika geho ekang, which is a negated form, which is where, um, which is not what I had in in like intended um, or wanted at the beginning. So, or what I was looking for. Um, and so I decided to utilize back translation. And I had asked Hezekiah what dasika geho ekang meant, which means the girl is not easy to see. And so, since this was not the result I was looking for, I kept pushing a bit more. I asked again for the girl is hard to see, and I finally had gotten Dasi Ka Kiklak. 
So, yeah, and so the elicitation went on in a similar manner as this. So, first of all, let's move on to the first way of expressing perception in Goro, which is the adjectival constructions. Um, we have example number one, dasi uh, ka gehu. Um, so this means the girl is clearly visible. So as you can see that in English, this is um, expressed through an adverbial construction. However, in Gorwa, to be clearly visible is expressed through an adjective. So it's one singular lexeme. Example two, we have hle ka tirai. Um, the cow has a variety of colors. Um, in Gorwa, this is, again, like expressed through an adjective, so one singular word. However, in English, it's through verbal constructions, construction, so to have a variety of colors. Um, so example three is barai do ki bua, which means the inside of the house is dark. But in this case, both English and Gorwa actually utilize an adjective, so there's a similarity in this case. So... The second way of expressing perception in Gorwa that I found was verbal constructions. Um, in the first example, we have Ayo i tsi ita hu pond. Um, the flower has a good smell. So in Gorwa um, and English, they both express this through a verbal construction, so to have a good smell um, or to be good smelling. Example two, we have tsi ita tsufo i ki. Um, the smell of sweat stinks. In both English and Goro, this is also expressed through a verbal construction. So in this case, there are quite a few similarities. Um, and the third example, however, we have um, Tsatai i Miria. Um, the literal translation of this is the knife is flashing, although what I had asked for during the elicitation was the knife is silver. Um, in Gorwa, it this can be seen that... Um, if something is silver, it's expressed through the flash to glitter or to sparkle instead of like the descriptive adjective that is silver in English. And I had actually had a few other examples where I had asked uh, for like the woman's jewelry is silver or um, I don't know. I had multiple examples where I ended up with the same media, which means to flash. So, yeah, that was an interesting little finding. Um, yeah. Uh, but also, I had gotten this media for, like, blinding and the water sparkles and things like that. So this it has multiple uses, but in this case, I just found that it was interesting that it was used to also express silver. Mm. So example four we have is khuspi i khaslasla. Um, so the stone is rough. So uh, in Gorwa, it's expressed through a verbal construction. So to be rough is a verb in Gorwa. In contrary to English, uh, where it is an adjective. Um, so, third way of expressing perception Gorwa is um, copular constructions. I only have an example, one example of this, although I'm pretty sure this is actually, it does occur often. It's just that I only had it come up like a couple of times or once, and this was the best example I could give. Um, so we have barai do a guilty. So inside the house, there's darkness or um, or the inside of the house is dark. And the literal translation is in in the house, there is darkness. Um, this is expressed through a copular construction, Gorwa, um, in comparison to English, which uses an adjective. Um, so, yeah. The last, the last way that I found that Perception is expressed in Gorwa is the the os construction, which um, Mela touched upon a bit earlier. If I'm not wrong, or, or not the same thing, but um, the same word, I guess. But in this case, it was interesting. I, I have no explanation for it really. Um, so I have example one, which was tsi ita moyang as, um, and it means it smells like moya. I'm not sure really what it means, like why it is constructed with us at the end. Um, and the second example was chai itsi ita haper us. So the tea smells earthy. The one, like my preliminary theory about this is that it maybe has to do with smell when you're trying to ask for things. If something smells like 
maybe it'll always be constructed with us. However, I haven't had it come up enough to come to a final conclusion. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting and worth including. Um, so then I'm just going to show you one last thing, which is the table of new words that I discovered. Um, so we have like the new words in Gorwa. So we have Flofi, which is honeycomb. Khathlathla, which is to be rough. Kununu is to mumble. Fukuku e is flirtation according to the Iraq dictionary. So it's not entirely sure, but because I had given the example of the woman hears the rustling of the leaves and I had gotten the the flirtation of the wind with the leaves or something along those lines. So it's not confirmed, but seemingly that's what it means. Um, futl is to whistle. Nororo is slimy or slippery in some examples, but slimy was the main one that I had gotten. We have khuspi, uh, which is a type of rough stone. So conclusion is that I found that, you know, throughout my research, these are the four ways that I found that Gorwa, that perception is expressed in Gorwa. It's through adjectival constructions, verbal constructions, copy constructions, and the as construction. And um, there are similarities between English and um, Gorwa, and they do express perception in the same manner in some cases. However, in a lot of other cases, they're different. And of course, the few lexical discoveries that I've made. So yeah, these are my references and thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Yasmin. I'll ask you the same question that I've asked everybody else. So if you had another session or two with Hezekiah, what would be the first kind of things that you would ask? Um, well, I think I would probably ask about the ask instruction or more so try to elicit a few more sentences with like, it smells like blank maybe or something blank smells like whatever kind of something like that to try and see if I come up with more of the same construction right. and to try to make sense of it really. Um, and then I would also maybe look into further, like, um, I don't know, maybe I, I brought it up earlier, like maybe cattle terminology. So maybe right. cattle, like cattle terms and stuff. Maybe I would look into that a bit further um, and maybe just try to come up with a few more copular constructions, because I know that they are actually probably ubiquitous within the languages that I didn't have them. You didn't get them in your yeah. sample. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I need to ask Martin, have you ever seen this os construction to smell like or to taste like? Well, not not uh, after the noun. I, I'm just uh, I'm so excited to. to it's see it's, this. it's an encapsulation, and then you have os, so like os is looking like a verb there in a sense. Yes. Um, and this sort of goes to show. I mean, when we were doing this. Uh, I think about it, you know, I've been working on, and this happens with every with every uh, field methods course so far that I've been doing. Uh, and, you know, I've been working with the language for 12 years, asking a lot of questions. And Yasmin, how, how many months have you been working with the language? And, and how much face time do you think that you got with Hezekiah? Like maybe like what overall, like maybe seven Oh my gosh, I think that that's even generous, right? But even, but when you focused on one particular area, yeah. there was a new construction there. And I think it's very strange and interesting. And I, I think it's very exciting. So I, I, I need to underscore that because it's something that we hadn't seen before. And it shows that, you know, I mean, what you're doing is real research and we, and we find new things. And I think that that's very cool. Uh, but Harvard, you, you had your hand up, go for it. Yeah, just on the on the same topic, this us is very fascinating. I don't know what's up with that, but I want to. Uh, I had the idea that maybe it's a copula with the reason case after it. I mean, I guess that's mostly for <laughs> for uh, for Mouse and Andrew, but uh, yeah, it's it's very strange. <laughs> I don't know what's up with it. Good good find. I think good fine. I think the first thing that I would do would be uh, so we talked about tea, yeah, mm -hmm. and it was like the tea smells earthy, and the construction is, it's like the tea is smell earth us, yeah, yeah the smell of earth reasoning, us. yeah us, yeah. and so I'd want to 
first of all, because we know that T is feminine. So that's going to be a short vowel on os anyways. I wonder if it's masculine, you get a long vowel, and does that just mean that it's a verb? Os means to resemble. Is right? the word samaku masculine? Yeah, it is. Because remember, we found a longer version with sam with samaku. But the construction was, was a little bit different. Was a different? It was okay. a little bit different. I'd count that one out. Okay. But anyways, this is, I think that if, if when I get my five minutes with Hezekiah, those are, that's the question that I want to ask him for sure. Yeah. Same. It's a, yeah, same, same. <laughs> and maybe a couple other people as well we'd want to see. Mela, though, you had your hand up. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, well, I just kind of, yeah, just about the same as construction I found very interesting. Um, could you just briefly go back to the slide where you had those examples? Let's go to the sure. share again, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to have a very useful question, but I was, yeah. Let's go to the share here. You jump back, I'll let you. Okay. Yeah. There we are, so there's both of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the tita here is like um, smell or yeah. smell of, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Smelling. Mm. Ah, yeah, right. I see. Yeah. So I want to know whether the hatir, whether it's a high tone there or not. Maybe you can. I I would that. yeah. I'm I'm sure that there's a that there's a high tone on both tsita and hapir. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. So now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I have any more insights, but I was just yeah. It's it's interesting. So it's yeah. Hmm. Interesting is is certainly the word for it. It's uh, it's very yeah. it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. But so this us construction is only in this with if you have a have a copula like that or, or can you also have a verb and then i think it is it has only come up like that for me with a copula and then the noun smell and then yeah it hasn't come up with a verb at all because otherwise okay. i think the one time it did come up with a verb is the this samaku whatever one like this it smells wrong and then it's different this other this other example was the 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 fish smells rotten, rotten or tastes but wrong. that was but that was tsias so mm -hmm. that was a that was a verb at the end that mean meant to like cause to smell mm -hmm. that it was a, mm -hmm. it was actually a causative suffix yeah so okay then work out yeah it's not the same thing yeah no it's it's, it's a different kind of thing mm -hmm. different so, kind of thing it's only come up as a copula here or, or, i don't know what it is but it's only come up like that its it own special os construction yeah you did right the yeah. os construction yeah very interesting yeah it's very cool and very exciting a new thing to look at any other thoughts about the or questions about um yasmin's presentation about anything else that we saw uh, Martin. Yeah, I was looking for my hand, but I thought I have a hand. Um, yes. Um, yeah, uh, the, the, the vocabulary at the end, very nice. Uh, fukuku. I don't remember what was in the dictionary, but what I remember that fukuku means in Iraku is uh, it is sort of sound symbolic, I would say, and it is the twirling of the, of, of, of the wind. So uh, that is that is what I have. So I I I don't recall what you had for for Gorwa, uh, the fukuku. We we got this fukuku. So what was the sentence again? What was the sentence again? It was the woman hears the rustling of the leaves. Right, it's and the rustling of this... the leaf, the the wind going through the leaves. And the very first thing we did, we we went to the uh, the Gorwa Flex database, and we said, "Okay, can we find Fukuku in there?" And of course not, because it's a baby database and it's still growing. Uh, so we said, "Okay, next step is to look at the related languages." So mm -hmm. we opened up we opened up the uh, the Iraq dictionary. And one of the words there, it's not Fukuku, but I think it's something like Fuku, and I think it's a noun for flirt. Yeah. So whether that means a person who flirts or whether that means like flirtation, I don't know. But I, I think Martin, I think you, you, I think you know that this makes sense. This idea of sound symbolism, right? Yeah. Maybe you have some thoughts on that, Yasmin. You know, some of the words uh, that that you that you saw there. Do you see any sort of 
sound symbolism for I guess because like I mean even though the other saw uh the other ones we got like kununu like the mumble it That's kind a good of one. yeah it has kind of like the quality it kind of sounds like mumbling so maybe it, it's the same thing I'm I'm not sure but there was no but also mumbling and whispering were the same thing wasn't it, it they were both yeah kununu, so yeah Mm. Yeah. So this would be a whole other area for you to look at. I mean, you could look at the sound symbolism in these forms that you got as well. I think that that would be very cool. Yeah. A lot of um, reduplication as well, right? We have miriri, Oh, nororo, yeah. fukoko, konono. There's lots of Replication. interesting little things going on there. Yeah. That's true. Maybe it's more like a, maybe similar to Hausa, where it's like, it's, it, 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 oh God, I can't speak. It intensifies it. Is it? Okay, so in Hausa, that, that, that's an intensifier. Yeah, to Okay. reduplicate. So maybe it's similar. Something to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Can you do the non-reduplicated forms? Like, can we do kuno? Mm, true. Can we do fuko without fukoko? Yeah. Martin gives us a definition here. Make round movements. Blow like a whirlwind. Not fukui. Fukui is, uh, yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's flirtation. Okay. Well, there you go. We got a we got a form here, but in your case, it's fukuku Mm. rather than fukuku. Okay. Yeah, so it's different in the in the, in the, in the consonant. Yeah, Mm hmm. yeah. Or maybe we need to listen to Hezekiah quicker. I mean, Though you're pretty good at picking up those uh, those yeah, uh, no, uvular no, 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 uh, stops. Yeah, Yeah. no, that's why it didn't sound like a K to me at all. That's yeah, why. no, it's just a difference. Yeah. Mm.